horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past and the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Very big fellow, I'm Silver! stage arrived in Mariposa after a hard downhill trip from the Colorado Mountains near the Continental Divide. Nearly everyone surged up to welcome the garden driver, but Mr. Jackson and Mr. Denton were more interested in the young man who stood near the door of the restaurant. There's Carrigan. Take a good look at him, Denton. Uh, he looks young. I don't know as I'd want to trust my savings to such a young man. Young? Sure, but in eight years, it's brains that count, and Carrigan's got brains aplenty. He dresses mighty fancy. Sure he does. He's rich. Those clothes he wears come all the way from New York. Come on over and meet him. Uh, you put your money in his plans? I sure did. I'm to be one of his partners. Uh, uh, howdy, Mr. Carrigan. Oh, hello there, Mr... Uh, uh, Jackson, remember? Oh, of course. Please forgive me for not remembering. Oh, that's was... all right. Imagine forgetting the name of one of my business associates. Uh, shake hands with my friend, Mr. Denton. Delighted. Uh, howdy. I was thinking some of going into business with you. Well, I don't know about that, Mr. Denton. I, um... Uh... I don't want too many in it. Well, I've got the cash. Cash isn't so important. I must have men of proved executive ability. Well, doggone it, I... Hey, uh, Mr. Carrington, uh, here's a letter for you. Just come in on the stage. Fine, just what I've been waiting for. Will you gentlemen excuse me? But I want to talk to you uh, about... Some other time, Denton. Can't you see? It's the wrong time. Well, I'd like to show him why he should take me into the business. Oh, oh Mr. Carrington, Mr. Carrington, look what I've got. It just came in on the stage. Oh, Mrs. Granger... It's good to see you. Oh, go right ahead and open your letter. No, no, no. There's no hurry about it. I'll read it later when I get back to my office. Oh, I've got the cash. I knew my sister would lend it to me when she heard that I had a chance to make a first-class investment. Well, shall we go into my office? Uh, the sooner we close our deal, the quicker, I always say. Right over here. If you'd like to read that letter you got, why, don't let me stop you. Oh, no, it's just a personal letter. A young lady I know. My, she, she's a mighty lucky young lady. <laughs> Uh, after you. Thank you. Please sit down there, Mrs. Granger. Oh, thank you. Now, here's the package. I'll open it up and give you the cash. Uh, uh Mrs. Granger. Yes? Mrs. Granger, I don't think you should put your money into my idea. Now, don't you try to talk me out of it. I saw you and Jim Denton talking. 
I suppose he wants to get in instead of me. No, it You is... promised I could buy an interest in the business, and I borrowed the money to do that same. Now, you've just got to let me. But perhaps you don't understand the business. Well, sure I do. <laughs> There's gold mines all around here. Only the best ore is sent out for extraction and refinement. The rest is just left. Yes, that's right. You've got figures to prove that the stuff we discard has plenty of silver and other metals in it. While it ain't worthwhile to ship it out, it could be refined right here at a big profit. That's the idea, ain't it? Yeah, yes, it is. Well, all right. But uh, there's a certain risk. You might lose your money. You showed me facts and figures a few days ago. If those facts and figures don't lie, there's sure to be a profit in the scheme. Well, of course. But, well... Well, you don't know but what I might run off with your money. Oh, Mr. Carrigan. I know an honest man when I see one. Eyes like yours don't come in the head of a crook. Hey, Carrigan, I... Well, hello, Mrs. Granger. Hello. Uh, Jammer, I was just telling Mrs. Granger there's some risk in our business. Risk? <laughs> oh, there's Kerrigan for you. Honest as the day is long. Well, there's some risk in everything. There's risk in eating. You might cut your tongue off with a knife, Jammer. <laughs> then there's the risk of walking down the street. Runaway horse might get you. But uh, Mrs. Granger has borrowed the money. Oh, good, good. That's the spirit. Get in on a good thing by hook or by crook. And I'm going to be in. Now, there's the money on the desk. You can send me the shares whenever you're ready. Uh, but, but, Mrs. Granger... I'm you... proud to be associated with two such honest young men. Good day. <laughs> Jammer, you eternally confounded fool. What's the matter with you, Kerrigan? Don't you want her money? No. What? I'm fed up with this crooked game. The people trust me, and what do we do? Give them a big and fancy story that's a lot of lies and false figures from start to finish. Hold on, Kerrigan. Have you gone honest all of a sudden? I don't know. Maybe I have. I want to get out. Ah, don't get fool notions. We're in too deep to get out. I tell you... Listen, I... Kerrigan, we took 5000 out of Flat Rock when we started this scheme. I know. And if anyone from Flat Rock finds us, they'll give us a dress and a tar and feathers and string us up from the highest tree. We can't quit now. But if we gave back the cash And we the can't people... do that, we spent some of it. Besides, you got that sweetheart waiting for you. Why, the scheme is going big here in Mariposa. We can collect about $20,000 and then make a getaway and go east. You can send for your girl and settle down. If Mary Ann knew what a low-down crook I well, am... there's no reason why she has to. Well, it reminds me. I got a letter from Mary Ann. Came in on the stage. Now, go on and read it. I'll go over our list of names here. Yeah, yeah I think we can get cash from Denton. Jackson's good for another thousand. We had this cash from Mrs. Granger, two thousand dollars. Jammer! Hmm? What's the matter with you? This letter. Bad news? Oh, it's worse than that. We're deeper and deeper. Well, tell me. Mary Ann says her mother drew $2,000, all their savings, from the bank. She sent it to her cousin, a woman named Mrs. Granger. Holy smoke. Mary Ann wants me to find out what Mrs. Granger's putting the money into and make sure it's on the level. Now what? I knew something would happen so Mary Ann would learn about me. This ends everything. Yeah, look here now. I, I hate to give up all the cash we've collected here, Kerrigan. We've got it... to return it. Everything is called off. Yeah, if this ain't a fine kettle of fish. Mrs. Green had only told me where she was going to borrow the money. It's too late now. We'll just have... You, Kerrigan, sit still. Sheriff. Pete, is that the man? That's the critter. That's his pal, too. Pete from Flat Rock. Those are the coyotes, Sheriff. They told the same pack of lies in Flat Rock. They collected the money and ran out on us. Kerrigan, you're done for. We're going to check and see if you ordered the machinery, the building supplies, and the workmen to make a factory, and all the other things you've told people you were doing. You needn't go to all that trouble, Sheriff. Give those crooks to the boys in Flat Rock. We'll deal with them. Kerrigan, you ready? Come on. Hey! Get that one. Right. Uh, I'll fix it. Hit the uh, sheriff again. Right. Come on, we got to travel. Leave everything. Leave that cash on the desk. Horses out there. Take the sheriff's horse. I'm with you. Boys, stop him. Get up. Get up. Hey, they're, they're, they're shooting. Just right. It's the rope if they get it. Yeah, I know it. Look, there's a lot of men from the cafe. They're starting after us. Get along there. Get, up. get along there. A short distance ahead of the pursuing townsmen, Carrigan and his pal Jammer rode for their very lives. They beat across the plain and for some time maintained their lead. Then the townsmen began to gain. Carrigan felt that it was just a matter of time. He didn't notice the two horsemen who cut in at an angle until he heard a shout above the clatter of hooves. Jammer, look. Mask. And a redskin. Come on, Silver. They'll get us. Leave us alone. Leave us be. This way. No, no. This way or you'll be caught. Come on. 
The Lone Ranger and Tonto turned the horses of the pursued men and guided them across the narrow bridge that slowed the pursuers. Then Tonto led the way to a dense forest and used all his Indian skill to hide the tracks and find a place that, for the time, would be comparatively safe. You'll be all right here for a little while. But, but why did you do this? Kerrigan, we got to keep moving. Those critters will lynch us. You leave here, they'll find you. You'll be all right here until dark. Why did you help us? Who are you? What's that mask for? Your horses can't go on without rest. When we reach our destination, you can send the horses back to the owners. Send them back? You, Kerrigan, have a lot of debts to pay off. Meaning you? What's it going to cost to have our lives saved? We'll get to that later. Yeah, now I'm all outlaw. You uh, have a lot of ability, Kerrigan. Uh, with less, I'd have had an honest job and a fine wife. But now... I learned all about you. You're going where your ability will be worthwhile. Oh, no. Oh, I'm through. You'll go or return to the people who want to lynch you and your friend. Deeper and deeper. Wait a minute, Kerrigan. This gent seems to know what he's doing. I know a place where there used to be a lot of gold. The mines ran out. Most of the people left. But those who remained are living on their savings. There's a lot of money in that little community. Yeah, sounds good. You steer us and we'll split with you for saving our necks. A jammer, I don't want to be honest. It doesn't matter what you want, Kerrigan. You've a debt to pay off. Where is the place? High in the mountains, near the Continental Divide. It is? Maybe you know the place. It has no name, but there's a hotel that is owned by Mrs. Stacy. What? You mean the woman with a daughter named Marianne? Yes. Well, I'd sooner die than go there. Well, I wouldn't. Any place else, but not no there. No other place will serve as well. Hold on, I can't go there. Mrs. Granger, a woman in Mariposa, borrowed money from Mrs. Stacy. When she writes Mrs. Stacy, I'll be found out. I can't get away with it. Tonto I, I... will be with you and do what he can to prevent any complications. But I tell you, You'll I... uh, meet a boy when you get there. His name is Dan Reed. He'll work in your office. Uh, won't you let me go some other place? We start tonight. Kerrigan and Jammer started slowly, but soon Jammer's enthusiasm ran high, and in less than a week, the whole community was talking about the proposed buildings. Then, late one afternoon... <sighs> Another day. How are things here in the office, Dan? Oh, everything was fine. I wrote those letters for you, Mr. Kerrigan. Oh, those. Here they are. One about the machinery and another about the supplies for the building. All right, Dan, I'll take care of them. Oh, that Indian named Tonto is waiting outside for you. Oh, all right, thanks. Good evening. Bye. See you in the morning. Right. Whoop, let me in, son. <laughs> Goodbye, Dan. Bye, Mr. Jammer. Well, Kerrigan, we sure are getting a lot of cash together. Money. What good is money? I can't talk to Marianne without feeling like something that, that crawled out from under a log. Here, throw these letters into the fire. Huh? What are those? Oh, just the ones the kid wrote. I have to maintain a pretense of going ahead with the plans. I've written for building supplies, machinery, laborers, railroad contracts, everything else. Well, sure, it makes it easier to sell the stock in the business if people think we're going ahead fast. Jammer, I wonder if we couldn't sneak away. Oh, no, that redskin watches every move we make. Well, I'm not a killer. And we couldn't get away with it. The only thing to do, Kerrigan, is take all we can get and forget the girl you love. Oh, Marianne. Kerrigan, someone just came to town. Who was it, honey? Mrs. Granger. And she says the man who tried to steal her money was named Carrigan. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now, to continue our story, Mrs. Granger, who knew that Kerrigan's plan was a dishonest swindle, came to town. Mary Ann, the girl who loved Kerrigan, brought the stunning news to the office. Well, did, did she bring back the money she borrowed from your mother? Yes, she did. And she told Mother all about you. Oh, I see. Well, Kerrigan, I guess that's that. I told her she was very much mistaken about you. Mary Ann, you... I you... asked her if anyone in Mariposa had lost money. And she had to admit that no one did. 
You stuck up for me? Of course I did. I told her you were going to do great things for our community. Well, um, uh, how does Mrs. Granger think now? Well, she doesn't know. She didn't like the way you two ran away from Mariposa with the sheriff's horses. Well, she had to admit, though, that the horses were returned. Oh, yes, they were returned, all right. Of course, uh, Mrs. Granger has to be convinced that you didn't defraud the people in Flat Rock before you went to Mariposa. Uh, Marianne, there's a lot that I've got to explain. I want you to know the truth. Oh, one thing more. Yes? Uh, here's the money Mrs. Granger brought back to Mother. Mother and I want to invest it in your family. Uh, Marianne... Please take it. It isn't much, but it's all we have. It'll show the people in town that we trust you, in spite of anything that Mrs. Granger might say. I don't want to. Hey, Carrigan. <gasps> the masked man. You left the door wide open, Marianne. Who are you? Carrigan's friend. Where's the cash you've collected, Carrigan? I... It's here. This desk. See that it stays there. Carrigan, who is that man? I'll use this office for a few minutes, Carrigan. Get out and take Jammer with you. But wait. Go on. I want to talk to Mary Ann. There are several things I'd like to tell her. I'm hanged if I... Go ahead, you. Kerrigan. I, I want to hear what this masked man has to say. Come on, Kerrigan. We'll be right outside the door. When you're through, I'll have a few things to say to you. Very well. Jammer, this is too much. That girl stuck up for me in spite of all that Mrs. Granger could say. I won't take her money. Kerrigan, we got no choice. Yes, we have. We can go back and let those people in Flat Rock do what they want with us. I'm going to square myself. You stay here. Huh? See? That redskin watches every move. You not go anywhere. Now, look here, redskin. Me name Tonto. All right, then, Tonto. You listen to me. At first, I thought I'd do almost anything to keep out of the hands of the people in Flat Rock. Ah. Uh, those fellas maybe give you tar feathers. Maybe hang you. I know. There again, don't talk like that. I know what I'm saying. I've had too much. Now I'd sooner go back to Flat Rock than stay here. Let them do what they want. You do what mask man says. Tell him our deal is off. Tell him I won't go through with it. He can do what he wants. You stay here. You do what mask man say. Carrigan couldn't move without being closely watched by Tonto, Dan Reed, or the mask man. In the days that followed, he tried several times to quit. But each time he found himself blocked. He tried to tell Mary the truth, but the girl refused to listen. He rarely left the office. When he did leave, Tonto was there to meet him. The Indian slept near his door at night. Carrigan became more desperate with every passing day. I'm a crook, I tell you. I'm a, I'm a thief and a, a swindler. I stole your money. I never intended to build a factory. Carrigan, there's no use talking to me like that. I don't believe you when you say that you're a crook. Mary, you've got to believe me. Those letters I wrote were never mailed. There won't be any factory or refinery. The masked man and this Indian are going to take half the money. The masked man talked to me, Carrie. Well, don't believe him. Believe what I tell you. Tell your mother and everyone else to get their money back before the masked man makes off with it. You, uh, talked long enough. Maybe you better go now, huh? Oh, yes, Tad, I'll go. Mary, tell Mrs. Granger to bring the folks here. Tell her to write to Flat Rock and tell those people where they can find me. She's already written to the sheriff at Flat Rock. She has? Oh, good, good. Then he'll be here. He'll be here with a lot of people to prove to you that I'm no good. Oh, Mary, if only they get here before the cash is gone. Goodbye, Carrigan. Did you hear that, Tonto? Did you hear that? They'll be here from Flat Rock. Then you and that masked man will be caught. You won't get far with the money you made Jammer and me steal. Carrigan, take it easy. Maybe better him stay in room for next few days. <laughs> Carrigan and Jammer were both kept virtual prisoners in their hotel room. Several days went by. Then Mrs. Carrigan, Mrs. Granger, went to the hotel and sought out Mary Ann and her mother in the lobby. Now I guess you would both pay some attention to me. I've heard from home. What did you hear, Mrs. Granger? Jenny, you look mighty pleased with yourself. Well, I, I don't like to say I told you so, but, but you can see for yourself that I was right. Now, here's a letter from Mrs. Jackson who cleaned out the desk that skin flint used. He wrote a lot of letters, but he never mailed a one of them. He never had any intention of going through with his plan. Well, if he's as bad as you say, Mother and I will lose our savings. Chances are he's already skipped town. Oh, no, no, he, he's ill. He's in his hotel room. You think he is? Of course he is, Jenny. Dan Reed is there with him part of the time. And that Indian named Tonto. His friend is there, too, Mr. Jammer. Hmm. I'd like to see him and be sure. Where's all the money he took in? Well, Carrigan had it with him. Oh, my sakes alive. Well, you can bid it goodbye. I, 
I only wish I'd had this letter sooner than I... Howdy, Mary Ann. Oh, Sheriff Smoke. Howdy, Miss Stacy. Hello, Sheriff. Something we can do for you? Well, I hate to start trouble, ma'am, but the sheriff from Mariposa has just come in. He's got a lawman from Flat Rock with him. Now we'll get the truth. Where are they? Outside. They're questioning some of the people that bought stock off Kerrigan. Well, why don't they question me? Mother and I gave him our savings to invest in the refinery and factory. Well, Mary Ann, I reckon you're a little bit prejudiced. No, a whole lot. What's that noise outside? I'm afraid the boys are in the way here. If Kerrigan is what Flat Rock and Mariposa claim, they're like to lynch him. Oh, no. No, they can't. Where's Kerrigan? Bring him out. We want our money back. Men! Men, wait a minute. Listen to me. Ain't no use defending him, Mary. Sam! Hey, Jim, listen to me. Kerrigan's on the level. I know him better than any of you. He's going to make this town boom again. Like he done in Flat Rock. Like he tried to do in Mariposa. Oh, please listen. You men who live here, you know how the gold mines petered out? You all own claims that aren't worth a thing. Kerrigan's going to make them worthwhile. That's the story he gave us in Flat Rock. And in Mariposa. We want our money back. Where's Kerrigan? Bring him out. Let him speak for himself. Boys, let Mary Ann finish talking. Please listen to me. There is ore in the mines, and it can be made worthwhile. But it takes a refinery to reduce it, and it takes machinery. It takes a lot of things. Kerrigan's going to bring them here. Mary Ann, you're blind. We want Kerrigan. Where is Kerrigan? We want him. 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 We that marble storm the place. Mary Ann doesn't deserve this sort of thing. Mask men, not let crowd make trouble. Kerrigan, maybe we can get out this window. If we don't make a getaway, they'll string us we up. We can't run out now. We can't even do that. Everyone will hold it against Mary Ann. Well, you can stay and hang if you're a mind to. I don't like hanging. You stay here. I'm going out that window, and if you leave the door to stop me, Kerrigan will go out the door. Kerrigan. Here, mask man. He's coming in the window. You. You made all that trouble. There's a mob in the hotel lobby. They're going to smash things. Mary Ann's... You'll stop them, Kerrigan. I'll stop... I'll what? You're going out there and meet those people. Well, that's what I wanted to do, but Tonto wouldn't let me. No, it's all right. Stand aside, Tonto. I'll throw that pack of wolves out, and I'll let them know that Mary Ann can't be blamed. Now, just a minute. Before you go, there are a few things you've got to know. For some time, Mary Ann tried to calm the angry men. She pleaded with them for a little more time. She begged them to leave Carrigan alone until he had a chance to prove his sincerity. There were times when she came close to winning a reprieve. But each time, the man from Flat Rock or the one from Mariposa spoke up. If he's on the level, why'd he run out on Mariposa? You can't deny he robbed the people in Flat Rock. Oh, and he has to have time to get the supplies here. You can't bring building supplies and machinery all the way here overnight. Do you think I'd love a man that was a crook? It's your love that blinds you, Mary Ann. We waited long enough. Bring him out or we'll go get him. All right, you wild-eyed pack of crazy wolves. Here I am. But before you come any closer, you better hear what I've got to say. Oh, he's got to go. Oh, mercy, they'll be shooting. You and you and you. If you want your money back, you can have it. I'll tell you how you can get it. Sell your stock in the Leadville Corporation. The Leadville Corporation? What's that? Hush, Mother, listen. What's the Leadville Corporation? You all thought your mines were worthless. Well, they're not. There's no gold in them, but there is lead. Lead enough to make all of you rich. You don't deserve it. You don't have confidence enough in honest people to deserve the break you're getting. How about Mariposa? Did anyone there lose anything? No, they did not. Flat Rock! Everyone in Flat Rock will be repaid. Now see here, Mr. Swindler Kerrigan. You're starting that slick talk again. You're long on promises, but short on delivery. That's right. You claim to write for building supplies and machinery and all such things, but we never get... Hey, to where's Kerrigan? Right here. We got a caravan of wagons loaded with building supplies and machinery. Where do you want it? Where is it now? Alongside the hotel. Oh, look! Look out that window. There's the stuff of your factory. Oh, says Kerrigan, don't deliver. There's your factory, and the railroad will bring in a spur track. Here's the letter to prove it. Now, do you want your factory or your money back? You see, boys, he's on the level. Shucks, I never thought of owning a lead mine. We got a good thing. Hey! I'll buy the stock of anyone that don't want it. Oh, wait. Wait just a minute. If you want your money back... Come up here. If you don't, get out. Go on, clear out. Vamos. Oh, mother. Now, look 
get them. They're so surprised. They look as sheepish as a boy caught stealing cakes. Jenny, it's fitting that you apologize to Mr. Carrigan. Well, I, I sure am sorry I was swayed by opinion, Mr. Carrigan, but, but I always said you had an honest look. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Marianne, I've got to see you alone. I know all about it, Carrigan. Come with me, Jenny. Leave those two alone. I sized him up as an honest man right at the start. Marianne, I, I didn't know. I still don't know. Dan Reed told the masked man every time you wrote a letter, Carrigan. Then the masked man sent the letters with your name on it. it never dawned on me that my plan was really a good one. <laughs> oh, and you thought the Lone Ranger was a crook. The Lone Ranger? Is that who that masked man was? Uh-huh. He told me all about you that day in the office. He knew there was lead there, and he knew it took a man like you to develop it. But he let me think. He made me think he was a crook. When you were ready to go back and hang, rather than go through with the crooked scheme, he knew you were the man to make this town famous as the lead city. Oh, Marianne, I'll make this place hum. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>